I've got Michael Fassbender, and I'm making no sense whatsoever. Um, so you've been working on Assassin's Creed. That's right. That's a far cry from Steve Jobs. It certainly is. Describe for me the difference between working on that and Steve Jobs, if you can. Yeah, um, one character says a lot and the other doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's just, it's, I guess it's you know, a totally different world. Um, you know, we're entering a sort of an action sort of world with, the, with Assassin's Creed. Primarily, it's sort of action-adventure. Um, There's a part of you that likes doing these things. There is, but I do think that this one as well, in particular, is very special because the idea behind it is a very interesting one. Uh, because the concept is that we've all got DNA memory within our DNA. So within your DNA, you can carry the memory of your ancestors. So what we call instinct is that, in fact. So you know not to eat this certain thing or, you know, why animals know when to fly south at certain times. And, and so that in itself I thought was a very plausible scientific theory. And I think if you can bring something that's grounded in a scientific theory into a fantasy world, then the audience will immerse themselves much deeper into that fantasy world. Kind of like The Matrix, but I think our concept is even better than, than The Matrix. You had a, a, a tendency to be loyal to your directors. You know, I like to consider um, them loyal to me as well, hopefully. Uh, you know, I just thought what Justin did with um, the Scottish film. Uh, sometimes I call it <laughs> by its name. You're a man of the theater. Then, well, I'm not really. Sometimes I call it by its name, and then other times I feel like I shouldn't. I don't know why. There's no sort of consistency to it. But uh, he just did such a phenomenal job on that, and, um, and his vision on that, and his strength on that, and just how he worked as a director with his actors, but also with the crew. I thought, you know, we needed somebody very strong who had a vision. And, and Adam, his, you know, his DP, Adam Arcapo, the two of them together are a fantastic team. And then thankfully, you know, Marion as well um, jumped on board. So, yeah, we've got a great team. And, uh, and I think a very interesting story. I, I look forward. Um, so this one, uh, I, I remember talking to Kate uh, at Telluride, and she described... Uh, she, looked, she, she just thought what you did was Herculean, you wow. know, that was the word, really. The, the, it, and, and she admitted that you did run the lines with her every day. It, the, because people on the set were just astonished yeah. that you didn't have your paper with you. Yeah, I mean, we would, script. we would do that. I think we come from very similar sort of backgrounds in terms of how we approach the work. Um, she likes to prepare a lot, and so do I. And... Um, and then when we're at work, we like to have fun and play around and really kind of find the elasticity of the scene and the piece and what we're doing with one another. And so, yeah, we would definitely, you know, run, run lines and just to sort of keep, if, if at certain times, you know, during the day, there's setups going on. You might come back after lunch, there might be a little funk. So, you know, you just want to make sure that the machine is oiled and, and ready to go. Uh, Tell me, if you can, can you describe the level of anxiety that this put in you? Um, I have to say, uh, standing on a train track tied to it <laughs> and a train approaching, I mean, I really was pretty terrified, you know, when I sort of took on the job and sort of, you know, the, the week sort of leading up to the first filming day. Once we started filming, I knew I was in it and I sort of... I was in it from then on, and I, you know, had to throw away all those sort of anxieties. But absolutely, leading up to that point, um, for lack of a better way of putting it, I was shitting myself. And um, she was great. I have to say, I really owe a lot to Kate. She had my back from the beginning. She's just such a supportive partner, and uh, and just you know, she is booked me a hotel, you know, in uh, Big Sur. She was like, are, "Are you eating enough?" Uh, you need to take a rest this weekend. I booked you a hotel, and uh, she was she was wonderful, really wonderful. Because I did feel the pressure on this one more than ever before. And you also, maybe I, w I wondered how you, how much did your experience to date make it possible for you to do this? In other words, you couldn't have done this a few years ago, maybe. 
I'm not sure about that. It's really hard to say. You know, I know that I gave every waking hour to it. So if I wasn't working at home by myself, I was rehearsing. Um, it was just, you know, total immersion in terms of all the hours of the day that were available to me. Um, would I have been able to do it before? I really don't know. I can't. I think perhaps you're the person to, to I, answer I, that. I, it's I, hard for me to view from I, that's the, Again, it was well. Kate who said that, it, it, that, that, that you, you, you had to rely on your film know-how mm. on some level to pull this off. Yeah. You know, uh, and how was, Do how was, how, how was Danny Boyle uh, supporting Danny you? was great. I mean, you know, from the beginning, he was fantastic. You know, he was, the, you know, I know that he was fighting for me to play the part, you know, um, and... Um, that was a grueling period where... The, well, that must which have been there might have been some doubters. Ego, uh, <laughs> shattering there, you know. Uh, you know, that... I, you know, the business is the business, and you know, you, it's always a case that there's more than one person in the frame for something, or that somebody has been approached already by the time that it gets to me, I'm not necessarily the first person in line. I'm totally cool with that, because I'm used to sort of <laughs> how I sort of, you know, came through the, the sort of industry. And, um, but yeah, you know, it's certain things, you know, are, aren't obviously nice to read, but... Um, well, it was the Sony hack that uh, revealed it all yeah. in a way that ordinarily would never have happened. That's exactly right. Yeah. So, it's life. And you Seth know? Rogen was there to support you. He said, it was worse for me. <laughs> Seth, yeah, I didn't actually know because I loved hanging out with him whether my life was in danger. <laughs> you know? um, he's an amazing man. He happens to be the most chilled out person I know and the most productive at the same time. He's, uh, he's incredible. And, um, yeah... What was funny was that he was sort of, you know, responsible, well, not responsible, but sort of, <laughs> he was right at the center of it all, and then sort of in it, sort of, you know, as we were doing the piece itself, uh, he's great. Uh, I love Seth, and I thought he did a, a wonderful job. The cast, all around, you know, were phenomenal. And, you know, getting back, to, sorry, to, to Danny, you know, I mean, you know, when he first sort of <clears throat> asked, you know, me to do it, I said, you know, I was like, well, you Thank you so much. I'm very flattered, but I don't look anything like the man. And um, are you sure <laughs> you want to? You, you know, you, you feel this is the right choice. And, and he was like, "Well, you know, I'm not interested in a look-alike sort of thing or an imitation. I just want to. I don't really want to focus on the essence." And so, f from that moment on, that's exactly how we approached it. And, and then, you know, while we were filming, and sort of got, I think, got to some point in the, the second act. I was like, let's, let's, you know, bring out the turtleneck and the, and the Levi's and, you know, I think, you know, the New Balance and let's go with this look. I think the audience, you know, will, will be grateful for it. And then the third act, because we've already opened up the film and gone, this is not a lookalike thing. Hopefully within five minutes the audience are going to go, this is not a lookalike thing and accept, the, you know, the character on screen as Steve Jobs. And then, you know, sort of by the third act we managed to sort of sneak under the radar and sort of make it more aesthetically like the, the man himself. No, no, you had, you had some, some ways to, 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 and the physicality too, you, you, you were. So my question there would be, um, for me, the most emotional material, the material that shows who he is, the material where is with the daughter. Mm -hmm. And there's a moment in that, after that first encounter with Lisa, where you look right at us with this, Woe begone, sort of expression. Do you, do you know which one I mean? Is this one she writes on the when she draws on the computer? Yeah. Um, what do I? I want to know. <laughs> you know uh, that that it, it opened up his humanity. It, 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 you're playing Steve Jobs a certain way, and then there are openings mm. that occur at several mm. moments in the film where he can really become emotional. That's right, and you know uh, to find. To see that sort of connection to his blood and his other blood, which is the machine, you know, I, I thought it was a really important moment to have that sort of meeting of the two and the beginning of a relationship there. You know, there's a rejection up to that point and then there is an acceptance and a beginning. And uh, I knew that was an important beat. And it also like this, the moment where, you know, in the second act, Lisa, played by Ripley, sort of hugs him, and there's that other sort of um, 
emotional beat, which is an uncomfortable one for him. And it's I, I, the way that I sort of played it in the, in, in the script and in this story was that there was the, there's sort of an unease with being open with his emotions. It's uh, it's not that they're not there. He just has difficulty showing them and processing them. Uh, whereas the machines are much more easy to have a relationship with, in a way, you, you know, in this story. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, the uh, the question of, of Andy, uh, he, Michael, is so amazing in this. Yeah. And, and his physicality, too. Yeah, and I watched that develop over the rehearsal weeks, you know, and he's... Both him and Catherine, I have to say, super, super committed, you know, just very, very committed. And, you know, he spent time with Andy Hertzfeld a lot, and, you know, having dinners and just sort of, you know, going around his house and having long chats with him. And so you, I could, that, that was very apparent for me, sort of watching the sort of process go from the beginning and sort of you know, first day rehearsal, read through rather, and then through the sort of weeks that we were rehearsing and filming. It was pretty extraordinary to see. What was the most difficult sequence to do? Was it right at the beginning when you didn't have your sea legs yet? or? I suppose the beginning is always the, you know, the time. That's the litmus test where, you, you know, you, you, the ideas that you have, you don't know how they're going to land or if they're going to work <laughs> and, you know, what's going to happen. <laughs> And I think that was the same for everyone. You know, I could feel there was that 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 energy was palpable in the air with Danny as well. He was sort of extra, sort of you know, energetic and manic. I mean, his personality is kind of like that on set anyway. He's full of energy. Uh, so I suppose you know, the beginning always, in this case for sure. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he is the um, he made it more visual. So so you're riding the the words, you're writing the, the Sorkin dialogue, mm. but Boyle is making it into a movie. Yeah. Can you just define how he did that in some way, in, in what way? Because, because it's not, it, it, there was a danger that this could just be like a play. Mm. I think he was very acutely aware of that um, from the beginning. And he would, you know, the thing about Danny as well is he shares a lot as well on set about what he's, you know, doing and his, his ideas. He's actually very generous with them. And, um, and so I knew that he was going to be working with that and trying to energize uh, the camera and, uh, and the shots and the storytelling narrative through that visual sort of medium. I knew that he was, going, he was focused on that. I could see that through the steady cam shots we were doing, the coverage we were doing. Um, and, you know, that's also, he brings his stamp. I think, you know, that sort of energy that he brings behind the camera is something that only he really does. And it's a sort of, it's a certain style that you can recognize immediately. So he changed the way he did each section. Yes. So, so how did that affect the, your, you know, you had to switch it off. You had to well, become we, different in, with each mode of, like well, it went digital at a certain point. We wanted to do that too. You know, Kate and I were just talking about that, uh, just a, a, a Q and A there. Um, we didn't want everything to blend into one, and that was the thing, that each act would have its sort of flavor to it and different sort of um, rhythms, you know. There is a rhythm running through uh, Aaron's writing, which is very specific, but then within that, you can compartmentalize those rhythms. And uh, so, you know, the, the first one is, you know, the visionary story, you know, the second one is the revenge act, and then the third one is the, the wisdom and the sort of, you know, arrival of... Uh, uh, with the sort of his work, and then of course, then there's the relationship sort of beats within each of those acts as well. Um, so, definitely having a, a, a change in time too. You know, years have passed. So, what's this person like now? What have they achieved? What do they still want? And what has happened to them in their lives? And um, that was that was key for all of us. So, you know, Danny always calls the first act kind of like punk, the punk act. You know, sort of. You know, uh, the way that it's shot on the, the format. origin myth yeah <laughs> the <laughs> format and the energy of that you know and then the second one is that sort of luscious uh, sort of surroundings in the opera house and and it's very much the revenge tale and so that energy is in there as well until the crescendo with with Scully you know, which is the build up that's what it's leading to you know this sort of uh, 
the revenge against what Apple did to John Scully. Did Daniels give you any advice? He sure did. I mean, I was feeling sorry for myself, and then he started telling me about newsroom. It's <laughs> like I had six months of it. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, yes, somebody did survive this. <laughs> uh, and, you know, uh, he was great. He said, you know, he gave us sort of tips on how to sort of break the rhythms down. And, you know, in terms of finding the rhythms, in order, the rhythms are there to help you learn. And uh, he was great. And, you know, it's like uh, stealing from Danny. You know, Danny is like, you know, D Jeff, uh, bone dry Daniels. You know, he's just got such a dry sense of humor. And, you know, again, a great wise head to have on set. And, and just really sort of, he's just such a consummate actor. And sort of beyond that, you know, he directs in theater. And he just knows storytelling. And he was, again, a joy to do scenes with. You know, he, he responds to something that you throw at him, and you throw something back. And, you know, he, he knows when that, you know, we're sort of dancing. It's a, it's a dance, and we relied on each other so much for that scene in particular, and all of them, but that, that sort of face-off. That's where it gets really Shakespearean. That's right. With the father-son. Absolutely. The betrayal. Yes. You know. Yeah, for yeah. sure.